Good morning guys and welcome back to Barham Engines. Right everyone, hope you weren't too hot yesterday. Uh, we were absolutely boiling. I've got home, just lay on my bed with a fan on me to be honest. Um, but we're in today. It's a little bit humid, but a little bit more bearable. Right, so my task for today, down here we've got the Studebaker, which I'm putting the liners in. So I'm on my fourth liner now, and as you can see down the back there, i just turn this off. Can you see? Ooh. You see down there, we're fairly close now on the, on bringing the flanges together from the two liners. You can see the step there I've done. Now what I've had to do is on here, I've wrote what the flange has got to end up at. You see, I've turned that one down and I've just got to do that one. And then that is going to be, I'll do all the rest of that. And then we're going to have a nice little, probably sort of half a mil um, spacing between the two liners there, or the two flanges. And that's going to be pretty much like how I do the Cosworths really. And that will mean that the gasket firing will sit right on this liner as opposed to the block. So I'm just gonna turn all the rest down at that and obviously do the liner grooves all the same. And then that will be good to press those liners in. So as you can see, we've got two pallets here. These are two jobs ready to go out. We've got the Vauxhall VXR here. So that's freshly bored, refaced the block, gone through the cylinder head. Um, John's just polishing the crank. We've got the gaskets there, the bearings in the box and all these old bits. And we are just waiting for the pistons to arrive. And obviously once I get the pistons, I'll check, make sure the running clearance is all right, but it should be. Um, I sort of seem to know those pistons. And then that is all ready to go. Over here, we have got the Cosworth block, which I did some work on, the one that had to be line board. That's all ready to go back to Jersey. So I'm just gonna organize that, get it wrapped up, and we can get that one on its way. The BMW over here, the 325 that we went on about a couple of videos ago, that one's all ready to go. So we've reboard the block to the existing pistons, faced the block, pressure tested the head, because that's the one we faced about 10 years ago, so he's all right. We balanced the crank assembly, and that is all ready to go. So we're still waiting to hear back from our suppliers about a crank, guys. I did notice that a few of you guys have um, messaged saying, go on eBay, there's a few cranks of the 1600 there for sale, second hand. So if I don't hear back in the next couple of days from our supplier with any good news, I'm going to take your advice and, and maybe get onto eBay and see what we can find. Even if it's a, a grindable crank, you know, it's better than um, scrapping the engine. So at this stage, just going to wait another couple of days and um, yeah, maybe take your advice on that. So this V6 bottom end, guys, this is for Stuart at Alfa Ragazzi. He sent this over here. What we had to do is, it's, it's quite hard to get bits for these actually, but what we've had to do is take the liners out. They measure perfect, so we've just deglazed the liners, as you can see. We've, we've cleaned the block out, blasted it, and obviously cleaned the base of the liners up, put them in, and you've got to, with a straight edge, check the, check the heights of the liners. So what we normally do is you put the, put the straight edge across the liner, and then you measure with a feeler gauge the gap either side there, and obviously, you know, at sort of angles and make sure that the jut out of that liner is correct. Should be about two and a half to three thou. Um, we've done that, everything's good. So we have refaced the cylinder heads down there. John's just got to polish the crank and then he can have that one back. Right guys, rant, thumbnail and title. What is the reason for it? It's about a head gasket we did on a vehicle last week actually going to cut a, a long story short as to why we ended up doing this head gasket. We did an engine for the guy uh, at the end of last year on this particular vehicle. Again, not going to name any names or, or the vehicle. Now, in the setup process of this, they, the guy that was doing the setup didn't plumb the breather system incorrectly. Um, it built up crankcase pressure and it forced oil out the back of the, in between the cylinder head and the block, so it was leaking oil. Not very much, but it was. Anyway, customer gets in touch with us, wants us to do the head gasket. I said, look, to be honest with you, we don't really work on vehicles. At the moment, we've got that many engines in here. We just don't need the work. And he said, I said, why don't you take it to a local garage? There's plenty of mechanics here that have dealt with that type of vehicle many a times, and they'll be able to do it probably quicker and cheaper than we will. 
Um, no, he insisted he wanted us to do it because we did the engine. I said, well, it doesn't make any difference if we did the engine because it's not a warranty job. Um, anyway, he wanted us to do it. So I said, well, you're gonna be looking about three weeks. Managed to get it in last week. He said, any idea of how much it's gonna be? I said, it's, it's probably, I don't know what it is. It's probably like a four hour job. I'll charge you three hours and we're 70 pounds an hour. I'm like, okay, yeah, that's fine. So we ended up doing the job. In fairness, it probably took us more like four, four and a half hours because he wanted the engine thoroughly clean. He's a bit anal over it. Um, we've had to take the head off. We checked the valves and what have you. Um, and then we replaced the head gasket. He supplied the bits. So we did the job. Um, in the process of doing the job, the rocker cover had a, an aftermarket sort of breather pipe welded into the back of it with a rubber hose on it. We've literally pulled the rubber hose off and the pipe has come out of the rocker cover. Um, and when we sort of took the rocker off and had a look inside, a friend of his apparently had welded it in and then ground the weld right back on the outside almost so it was wafer thin. Anyway, we did the job on that day. So I rang him up, I said, look, the job's done, everything's great, um, only we've got this problem. I said, the problem we've got is we've got all the kit to do the welding. We're waiting for a welding gun. I said, the guy that we get in subcontract to do the welding, um, aluminium welding, he's away till Friday, which was two days after. I said, it's a bit of a coincidence. Usually he's, he's available on the same day or come in after work and do it. I said, you know, the, the car will be done, obviously when that's done. Oh yeah, yeah, no problem at all. I said, we can store it in here, it's gonna be safe, but, um, he said, I'll tell you what, my missus is popping by this evening. She'll grab it and the guy that did it for me, he'll weld it and we'll drop it back first thing in the morning. I said, are you sure? He said, yeah, yeah, no problem. So that's what he did. So the next morning, the rocker was there. We stuck it on, um, obviously spent, we spent probably half hour, three quarters of an hour checking over everything, running it up, making sure it's all good. Um, he then came and picked it up on the afternoon. Now, this is the bit that, really annoyed me and was a little bit shocking because it would it become sort of friendly he's turned up the car was outside here with the engine uh, with the bonnet off um so he could sort of have a look it was bone dry of all you know we've made a good job of cleaning it all first of all um i wasn't actually here when he turned up i turned up about 10 minutes after first thing he does is get underneath then he comes in and starts using our cleaning equipment underneath you know cleaning away and i thought what's he doing he was there for about 20 minutes doing that. And then when I've gone over to see him about paying the bill, he said, right, let's haggle on the price. I said, there's no haggling on the price. That's the price. He said, well, no, I've had to take that rocker cover off and wear it. I said, no, well, I would have done that, but you want, you said you'd get your missus to pick it. Well, no, he said, you've pulled that off. I guarantee you. He said, I've had that pipe off there loads of times and, and, and broke. So you've been ragging that about. I said, I can assure you we haven't. We literally, you've, you've got to twist it a little bit to get it off. And I said, the thing's just come off. I said, whoever welded it was the problem. I said, they'd ground the weld off the back. Anyway, you weren't having that. At that point, a friend of his pulled over the road there in a van, um, a delivery van, got out of the vehicle, shouted across. He obviously knew him. He's shouted over to his mate on our estate. It's over here having a problem sorted that they buggered up. Obviously he was joking, but that really got my back up. I thought, do you know what? You don't shout over an estate when you come to pick a car up, something like that. It was nothing to do with us. It wasn't a warranty job. It was something we were helping him out with. Um, so that got my back right up. And then he turns around and said, did you do the job? I said, well, yeah, clearly we did the job. He said, no, did you do the job? I said, well, it doesn't matter who did the job. I'm not gonna have, any of my staff working on something I don't think they're competent in. And he didn't seem to be happy with that. He sort of shook his head on it. Um, at that point, I've just walked in. I, he, he's put my back right up. He's continued to talk to his mate, who's wandered over with the van, so I don't know what they were talking about. Then the phone rang and I'm on the phone. I could see him hanging around waiting for me. Next thing I notice, the car driving off. So he's jumped in, drove off. Apparently he said to John, um, I'll pay over the phone. Um, when I got home, he hadn't rang me, obviously. Um, I sent him an email. I wasn't happy. I said, I was polite enough, but I said, I don't appreciate 
when we've agreed on a price, I would have sorted the rocker cover out. And I said, really, I could have charged you what it actually took me to do. And then we could have knocked the rocker cover off. I said, but in fairness, I didn't charge you the hours it took me. Um, and we were doing you a favor. We said that we didn't want to do the job in the first place and it was done properly. I said, also, I'm not happy about you complaining about who did the job here. The job was done correctly. Um, and thirdly, I don't appreciate you shouting over our estate to people untruths like that, that it was in here because of something we buggered up. Anyway, he's emailed me back a load of spiel about customer service and all the rest of it. And um, he was treated badly and, and what have you. Um, and in my email, I said, you don't have to ring up. The details are on the bottom there. Just pay by via backs. And at the end of his email, he said, I'll pay, I'll pay by via backs then. He still hasn't paid. Um, I did send him another email. I sent him a copy of the invoice again. I sent him another email saying, are you going to pay the bill? No reply. So at this stage, I'm assuming that he's not going to pay the bill. Um, looks like we've been done a little bit on that one. Feel free to comment on what, you, what you'd say. But yeah, it's put my back up that really. Um, just the way he sort of behaved when he turned up to pick the car up and then just drove off with it. So you win some, you lose some. You can't keep everyone happy. But um, yeah, a bit of a strange one that, guys. The reason I'm standing in front of our kit car here is because we're thinking of some graphics to go on the side of the van. So if you can picture that blue there, and the blue stripe that goes over the top of the kit car and also the wording. Um, the idea I'm coming up with at the moment is we've got the van here and on the MSRT official website, they do a, a sort of graphic that you can have put on as an optional extra from standard. And what that graphic is, is a sort of a black, um, a black stripe that goes up here and sort of along there and a bit of a funky turn here. Um, you can either have it black with the gray or black and various colors and what have you. And it's got the MSRT written up the bottom color there. Um, if, I suppose if you go on Google, you'll be able to see what I mean. But what we're thinking of doing is having a, a bit of a custom um, stripe. We're thinking of sort of going up there with the black and across and then underneath it from sort of there, we're gonna go with the same blue as the kit car and that will go over here. We'll have the MSRT maybe in there. And then we're probably thinking about having the Barham engines across here in our funky writing. Don't know what you guys think. But at the moment, I want to keep it as subtle as possible, you see, but it's hard to know what. The only problem you've got is that stripe there from MSRT is 450 pound plus VAT. So I certainly won't be doing that. Um, but yeah, I'd quite like to do something like that, you know, a bit customised. Um, so let us know in the comments, guys, what you think before we do anything. It's warm again. Right, so we've been having a little bit of a jiggery about in here. Um, Isaac's been going through the cylinder heads today. I'm almost towards the end of machining the block for the Studebaker to get the liners in. So first thing in the morning, hopefully, about 10 o'clock-ish, I, I can press them liners in and get it set back up and bore them. So hopefully get that block finished tomorrow. That's that's what I'm planning on anyway. Um, so, <laughs> you know, I said to you a week or so back that we'd sort of caught up and um, everything was seemed sort of sensible in here. Well, all of a sudden, uh, sort of is, but not. The V8 that I had sitting down here, which we didn't have to build, we just had to do machining on, that was the Rover V8. The customer came and picked that up this afternoon, which was marvelous, but he's then dropped a Land Rover engine off to be done. As you can see, it's the complete engine. We said to him, look, we do not know when we're gonna to get to this. Um, the thing is, they're a really good customer, so we don't wanna let them down. So we're gonna hopefully crack on with this as soon as we can. But as you can see here, we've had, a little, we've had a little sort out. We've still got the Jag. This is the second Jag. The customer that dropped this off, as I said to you, they're a, a really good customer of ours. They're still waiting for the block to come back that's been sort of in the car having a bit of a retro fit so problem we got is because of, because of lack of space really this is all the bits off the jag we're waiting for the block back for so there's no point getting that one on the stand and starting stripping it until that one's done really this thing over here is what i showed you earlier this is just the uh, the bmw waiting for a crank on that hopefully 
That there is the Vauxhall 2 litre 16 valve that's waiting to be done. That fortunately is no rush whatsoever. He just wanted to send it in. He was well aware that we weren't going to touch that probably this side of Christmas. So yeah, now we've got a Land Rover to, to add to our problems. We've still got to start that one, which again, there's no major rush on that, but that is going to have to be next on our list as soon as we find a bit of space. Isaac is cracking right on with the MGB. So the block is somewhere. <laughs> that's got to be bored as soon as the Studebaker's done. That's got to be bored. While I'm finishing the Studebaker there tomorrow, this is from Paul Dove's brother. Um, this is the Skyline block. This has got to be bored 0.5 over. So I'm going to hone, rough hone that and then finish on it. And then that's done. Um, he's got a nice set of CP Carrillo pistons to be done. Uh, to, to go in there. Uh, so, yeah, organised sort of chaos at the minute, guys. Oh, we've got this... We've got this Ford down here, which we're just going to do an exchange engine on. We've got no time to get involved with that. Um, we're just waiting back for... Still waiting for the registration. Anyway, good news on the 1500 pre-crossflow over here. The guys give us the go-ahead on that. John managed to find a set of pistons at 0.5 up in our store. Been there for probably 25 years, I would say. Um, so they're gonna come in handy. Uh, so we're gonna obviously crack on with that as soon as possible, but we need Paul in here. Paul's not in till Thursday, Thursday, Friday. But yeah, we're a little bit stuck. Um, this is the V8 that we're waiting for the, the crank assembly back to be balanced from CTM Performance. Now, I've probably said this before, but we can't balance V8 crank assemblies. Um, we have to send them to CTM Performance. Charlie there, the owner, he always helps me out. Um, so yeah, still waiting for that to come back and then we can crack right on with that and get that one out of the way. But yeah, as you can see guys at the minute, mate, oh, there's the MGB block. Yeah, organized chaos in here. Um, it's one of them. The trouble is, although we've got all this in here, we still have, oh, I don't know, two, three emails a day. We have several phone calls, people wanting to send engines in. We just can't do them. I need a bigger team, need a bigger premises, really. Um, but that's, I suppose that's for, for in the future. First things first, as I say, because we're getting a lot of these grotty old classic motors now, we really need, um, cannot get that vapour blaster here quick enough, to be honest with you. I'm dying to get that. That's going to be a big help to us. Um, and thanks a lot to a lot of you guys that commented in the, the video, the last video where I said I was getting the Vapor Blaster just to suggest a few things before we go about using it on these classic motors, letting us know a few sort of tricks that they've learned over the years, the guys with the Vapor Blaster. So yeah, thanks a lot for that. Really appreciate it. Thanks ever so much for watching, guys. Remember, hit that subscribe button, like, Comment down below on that strange situation of us being done over and we'll see you in another one. Take care guys.